So enough talking, let's get to building. And just to make sure we're all on the same page this month, what you're going to be doing is taking some of the fun materials that we send your way and not only building the catapult, but also designing and building the ammunition that you're going to be launching out of it. And what the goal for this month is, is to hit this target that we include in your kit from as far away as possible. And this can be a little bit of a complex project. So right off the bat, we're going to show you some examples that you may be able to draw some inspiration from. These catapults come in all different shapes and sizes, and even colors, and they can vary in complexity from something as simple as a spoon to a complicated machine. These are just a few examples of the different options that you can pursue in this project, and we can't wait to see what you guys end up coming up with. Check out this next clip for some handy tricks when it comes to banding together your catapult components. A lot of catapults are going to have components that lean against each other, and this is a great way to fasten those in a nice and sturdy way. If you need to put a stick through a piece that is already secured on both ends, this is how you can thread it through. This is where having different strength rubber bands can come in handy, and it all depends on the distance that it needs to be stretched. If you found any inspiration from this design, you're going to need some vertical pieces, and here's how you can bond those two together. Finally, for this simple design, this is just one way to achieve the cross pattern that is necessary to attach these two pieces. So now that you know a little bit more about elastic potential energy, do you think it's better to have more or less rubber bands involved? Or the thinner rubber bands or the thicker ones with the higher K value? I guess there's no real wrong answer, so be sure to play around with different combinations and orientations of them. Feel free to cut the rubber bands or tie them or do anything you want with them in order to help you accomplish your task. So now that you're a little bit more familiar with projectile motion and how objects behave once they're launched into the air and they're under the influence of gravity, can you guess about which angle you want your projectile to come off your catapult? The answer is somewhere within this 45 degree angle range. And if you don't know what that is, check the protractor that you got in your bridge kit. If you launch it too low, your projectile is not going to get too much air under it, and it's going to land on the ground before it has too much of a chance to take off. On the other end of the spectrum, if you launch it too high in the air, it's going to go high, sure, but it's also going to land right in front of it. If you can find a nice happy medium somewhere within this range, that's going to give you the best of both worlds, where it's going to have a chance to take off into the air, and also be able to cover some distance in the meantime. In case you are having some issues with the angle that your catapult is launching from, it's a nice and easy fix for you. All you have to do is build a wedge that you can stick on the front end, and that way it could launch higher for you. Or if you want it to launch a little bit lower, stick it behind the back end, and it'll come out a little bit flatter. Does anything in these two catapults ring a bell? Think back to the bridge project where we talked about the triangle being the strongest shape in the world. Remember that concept when you go to build your catapult as we want it to be a nice and sturdy structure so it doesn't break. If you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, no worries. Just take things step by step. First of all, you're going to need a nice strong and sturdy base. Then build a little bit of elevation and a point where you can get some leverage from. Finally. Attach some rubber bands from that point of elevation to sort of a lever arm, and you should be good to go. If you're still feeling a little bit uneasy, no worries at all. We have a model of a really well-performing and relatively easy to build catapult that we're going to put sort of a zoomed in time lapse of right on this bench right here. So feel free to use the model of this catapult from the upcoming video, and you should be in pretty good shape. Glue together a couple of the bigger popsicle sticks to get going on the long end of the base. Use some of the thicker wood to connect the two sides. 
double up some more of the popsicle sticks as you start to build vertical, and glue them about three quarters of the way back along the base. Make a crossbar that is going to serve as our point of leverage. Take a longer piece of balsa wood and slide it underneath both of the horizontal pieces. Attach it using some of the rubber band techniques that we demonstrated earlier. The spoon is a great option here to house the rock that we're going to launch, so glue it on in a place that makes sense and at a good angle. Looks like it's performing well and ready to go. And in case you have a situation where you are trying to put two popsicle sticks perpendicular to each other, we recommend putting in two tiny slits so you can slide them on top of each other. Thanks for tuning in everybody. Remember to take advantage of our Zoom calls in case any questions pop up along the way. We can't wait to see what you guys come up with this month. And also, remember to submit your finished projects to us in the Upload File tab because, spoiler alert, we may or may not have some cool prizes for some of the better performing or most creative catapults this month. Be on the lookout for things like gift cards or some cool sticks merchandise. So just keep your eyes on that and uh, we can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Thanks a lot everybody.